see right there, Under the Radar is the podcast. So you're an actor, um, fantasy, baseball expert. That's quite, uh, I don't, well, I guess those things can go together. Yeah. You made them go together. Well, I, I, right? I, I really try to look at the game from a psychological perspective. So I'm, I, I as, as I have said, I believe that character plays a big part and human behavior plays a big part more in baseball than in any other sport mm. because it's 162 games. And over the course of 162 games, who you are is actually going to come out. And I use that a lot. And also really? use it, I also use it in my trading. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, we, I call it cut of jib index, mm -hmm. which I, am, I admit I'm fudging it a little bit, but I'm looking at what's this guy's track record of reliability yeah. and right what we would call makeup, which I thought for decades sports writers spent so much time talking about that and not production because as a fantasy baseball player, what you require is production, right? So you have to, that's got to be your base. You're looking for some sort of outside edge into what's going to drive that production. Yeah, I look at someone like Yasiel Puig. That's somebody who I never really own on any fantasy teams. Here's why. He may give you some of the same production that you're going to receive from a Starling Marte, who you're going to have to take earlier in a draft, to be sure. Right. But you're also not going to have Starling Marte take on the whole St. Louis Cardinals team. Mm -hmm. Now, what would have happened there? He ended up getting suspended, I think, for three games. What would have happened if he had punched and broken his hand? or had gotten trampled. These are the things that actually over the course of a 162 game season in the fantasy world are going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, and guys who are punching dugout walls are not guys that you want on your team. Mm -hmm. uh, so little things like that, guys like Aaron Judge who find stability, these are guys who, I'm, who I lean towards. Someone like Jose Altuve that we were talking about earlier. I look at him coming into this season as this is gonna be the most challenging season of his career. Because for the first time, every stadium that he goes into, he's gonna be booed. Right. Not booed because he's a great player like I might do at Yankee Stadium, but booed because he's a cheater or he appears to be a cheater. How is that gonna change his life? We saw what happened with Ben Zobris last year when he was going through some personal challenges. Personal challenges affect the way things go in baseball. Mm -hmm. I think Bregman and Altuve are two guys that I'm actually dinging quite a bit to say, you know what, I, right. I think they're going to be challenges. I think it's a mm -hmm. human game. Okay. What, what, you, what do you learn first? Because you're kinda, you were late to it, right? In fantasy baseball, what, yeah. about what, eight years ago? Uh, so yeah, about, okay. I, I started playing fantasy baseball about 11, and then I got invited into an industry dynasty league. Okay. Um, and that sort of just t I took What off. did you find appealing? What, what like, really got what, you in? What I loved was the prospects, actually. That's why I was talking about Christian Robinson and Seth Beer, mm -hmm. is because watching these guys get drafted early in drafts, we're looking at Rutschman now, we're looking at Vaughn, Jason Dominguez. These are some of the top prospects in baseball. I love watching them grow. A guy that I was talking to John Hart about during the break is Max Fried. I drafted him in 2012 when he was a high school player out of uh, Harvard Westlake. Okay. And watching right. him grow and become who he is, go through the TJ surgery, everything else that it is, that's some of the most fun that I can have. In, in you stuck through him when others abandoned him. You stuck through him. No, I traded him. <laughs> no, I traded him. No, I did. <laughs> but now it's time to it's it's time to get him back. Right, because, right. Uh, it's funny the attachment you get when like he's one of my guys. guys that you draft mm -hmm. through different leagues, you'll continue to draft. He becomes like yeah. your guy. So in Tout Wars this past year, I was, I was lucky enough to play in Tout Wars for the first time. It was the elite. It is the elite. Yeah. Uh, and right. then I'm lucky enough to, I, I was, I, I won in my first year. In, you won in Tout Wars. I did. I won in my first season. Uh, I was very, very fortunate. Caught a lot of breaks. But the guys who carried me over that finish line, guys like Scott Kingery, guys like Max Muncy, mm -hmm. guys, guys like uh, Garrett Hampson for Colorado. And that last month, he took me over the edge. I'm looking at Hampson this year. I'm looking at King. I've yeah, got yeah. good feelings towards these players. So. Wow. so you do league only. You do NL only. And now, well, right. actually, so you got, what you got to dig deep. I just got invited into AL Labor which is, uh, okay. labor is the kind of the granddaddy of all, and I'm going into AL only against really the best players in fantasy baseball, so. Excellent. All right, yeah. tell us, you're playing George Washington, right? You've yes. Been, you've been acting, you know, since getting, Skidmore College, Skidmore right? College, you're. Skidmore, my, my daughter and my wife both went there, so we spent time in Saratoga, but all right, so now here's the, 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 playing George Washington, what was the amount of prep, study, and figuring out how do you portray this man? Well, it was, a, it was really the greatest challenge of my career, and getting the job, I understood immediately that the responsibility that was in front of me. It was, it was going to be, I was going to be watched at every moment and I took it very seriously. I was lucky enough to have a historical advisor who brought me through and I worked with the entire time. What, what did you find about him that we, you know, because at this point he's like a cardboard cutout figure. What did you find as far as a human being? What did, there what you, did go. you have to come? Yeah. This is the best question. Here's what I, here's what I learned that I didn't know. Um, I always thought of him as sort of this marble statue who sort of stood there, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, the reality, the truth was he was an incredibly charismatic figure. Hmm. He had so much passion. He started the French and Indian War in 1952. He, he made huge mistakes. He was like a, a young baseball player who would go into the general manager's office and say, hey, it's gotta be like this. And they're like, why don't you shut up, Washington? 
So he got kicked out of the British Army because of that. Then when he turned 30, he moved to Mount Vernon and spent about 10 years learning how to keep his mouth shut and how to breathe. Mm. That's what we see is a man of passion who learned how to control those passions. Mm. Similar to baseball players who sort of grow into themselves. That's what I saw with General Washington.